In part A, we are asked to determine this particle's velocity at t equals 1 second. We are not given a velocity function. We, of course, are given a position function. So we're going to have to transform the position function into the velocity function. And we can do that by recalling that velocity is equal to the derivative of the position with respect to time. So essentially, we have to compute the derivative of this function to change it into a velocity function. So we can go term by term and compute the derivative. The first term is a constant, so the derivative would be 0. And then we have minus 12t, the derivative of which is minus 12. And then following the power rule, we pull that power down and multiply by the coefficient. We would get 6t, and then we subtract 1 from the original power to get a power of 1. We can simplify this and say that the velocity is simply negative 12 plus 6t. So now that we have the velocity function, we can determine the velocity at t equals 1 second. So we will compute v of 1. Basically, that means you'll be plugging 1 in for t. And so what you get here is negative 12 plus 6. And of course, that's going to equal negative 6. Now, the units here of the velocity will be in meters per second because the question noted that the position is in meters and the time is in seconds. So the correct answer to part A will be negative 6 meters per second. Now on to part B, which asks us, is the particle moving in the positive or negative direction of x just then? Well, we can see, of course, that the velocity is negative as computed in part A. So if the velocity is negative, then we know the particle would be moving to the left. So when part B asks us, is it moving in the positive or negative direction, you simply have to look at the sign of the velocity. So the correct answer for part B will be in the negative direction, simply because the velocity has a negative sign on it. So on to part C now, which asks us, what is its speed just then? Well, that's going to be relatively easy because speed is equal to the absolute value of the velocity. Now, at time one second, we determine the velocity to be negative six meters per second. So we would simply compute the absolute value of negative six meters per second, which of course turns out to just be positive six meters per second. So this would be the correct speed and the correct answer to part C. D, is the speed increasing or decreasing just then? Okay, so that's a bit more challenging to understand, perhaps. It's worth noting that if the velocity is pointing to the left, as it was in parts A and B, and the acceleration also points to the left, and we haven't determined the acceleration yet, but if that were the case, then the particle would definitely be speeding up. So in any situation in which the velocity and the acceleration are pointing in the same direction, then you know that the particle is speeding up. On the other hand, if the velocity points to the left but the acceleration points to the right, then the object would be said to be slowing down. So you can probably tell that to answer this question we need to figure out the acceleration. Now, acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Let's recall that the velocity we computed earlier, and that was negative 12 plus 6t. So we can calculate the acceleration by calculating the derivative of this equation. So the derivative of negative 12 is 0, and the derivative of 6t is just 6. So we can see that the acceleration ends up being positive 6 meters per second squared. So since the acceleration is positive, then it would be pointing to the right. Recall the velocity is still pointing to the left, and therefore the particle would be slowing down in part D of this question. And so the way it was phrased was, is the speed increasing or decreasing? We would say the speed is decreasing, which is another way of saying that it's slowing down. So that would be the final correct answer for part D of this question. Now on to part E. Is there ever an instant when the velocity is zero? Well, perhaps we can explore that question 
by taking our velocity, which was negative 12 plus 6t, and setting it equal to 0. And then trying to solve for this. So if we add 12 to both sides, we then have 6t equals 12, divide both sides by 6, and we have t is equal to 2 seconds. So yes, there is a time at which the velocity is equal to 0. It happens to be at a time of 2 seconds. So we have actually answered part E of the question. Now on to part F. Is there a time after 3 seconds when the particle is moving in the negative direction of x? And so to answer that question, it might help to actually look at a graph of the velocity function. We recall that the velocity function was negative 12 plus 6t. So we'll plot velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. We remember from high school algebra perhaps that when you graph a straight line, you just plot the y-intercept first, so it would be down here at negative 12. And then to get the x-intercept, or I guess the t-intercept, it would help to set this equal to 0. So if we add 12 to both sides, then we have 6t equals 12 and then divide both sides of the equation by 6, and we get t equals 2. So it's going to pass through the t-axis at a time of 2, and then we have this point here along the y-axis or the v-axis. So we connect these points together to form a straight line. And what you want to notice is that at 3 seconds, the velocity is going to be positive because the v-coordinate is a positive value right here. And then as you continue on in time, when you get to 4 seconds, it's the same thing. At 4 seconds, the velocity is still positive. In fact, as time marches on from 3 seconds and beyond, the velocity is always positive. So v is always going to be positive as long as the time is greater than 2 seconds. So when this question asks, is there a time after 3 seconds? When the particle is moving in the negative direction, the answer is definitely no, because after 2 seconds, and certainly after 3 seconds, the velocity is always positive, so it's always moving in the positive direction of x, never in the negative direction of x.